After the conclusion of their climactic duel, Obi-Wan reluctantly left his former apprentice to die upon the volcanic sands of Mustafar. For many weeks after this confrontation, Obi-Wan truly believed that Anakin must have died from his wounds. The Jedi blamed himself for Anakin's fall while also lamenting the fact that he failed to turn him back towards the light and was forced to kill him. Troubling thoughts swirled around the mind of Kenobi. Did he do the right thing, leaving Anakin there to die? What should he have done? What could he have done differently? However, it would not be long before Obi-Wan would realize that Anakin, now clad in the dark armor of Darth Vader, had survived. After the Clone Wars, Palpatine was one of the most popular politicians of all time. Most people in the galaxy, particularly in the core world, truly believed that Palpatine was a hero. From their perspective, Palpatine had pretty much single-handedly won the most destructive war in galactic history, despite the meddling of the traitorous Jedi and the ineffectiveness of the corrupt Senate. Due to this, Palpatine was loved by the people. However, to achieve total power, he also needed to be feared. As Palpatine could not reveal himself to be Sith, as many saw them as no different to the Jedi, Palpatine needed a law henchman that would instill fear into the Imperial citizens. Vader fit this role perfectly, and so, just a few weeks after his encasement in his new suit, Palpatine revealed him to the galaxy. Darth Vader would make his debut during the Battle of Kashyyyk, the Empire's first real show of power. The Wookiees had been found harboring some Jedi, and in retaliation, the Empire enacted a brutal crackdown on the entire planet. The Wookiees were mercilessly defeated and enslaved. They were portrayed as mindless animals and Jedi sympathizers on the Imperial Holonet, while Vader was the Empire's righteous enforcer. And it was this Holonet broadcast that would eventually make its way to the Outer Rim, where grieving Obi-Wan was drinking away his troubles in a bar. As he drank, he pondered on the events of Mustafar, regret filling his mind. The Holonet broadcast interrupted his deep thought further depressing the Jedi Master as he heard about the deaths of yet more Jedi. The Holonet broadcast then showed an image of Vader, stating that it was Lord Vader who had hunted down and killed the Jedi. Shocked at what he had heard and not believing his own ears, Kenobi asked a passerby if the Holonet had indeed named the suited figure as Darth Vader. Kenobi was filled with dread and panic and couldn't help but state out loud that Vader was alive. Despite his usual calm and collected personality, Obi-Wan looked visibly shocked by this revelation. Clearly undergoing some kind of panic attack, a fellow customer at the bar even came over to help Obi-Wan. The man explained that Vader had ravaged the population of Kashyyyk, and that for his own good, he should refrain from talking about the Dark Lord with anyone. Kenobi's shock and panic soon turned to deep regret. He began to believe that he had pushed his apprentice even further towards the dark side, and wondered whether he would have been better off killing him. His thoughts soon turned to Luke, and he began to fear that he was no longer safe on Anakin's homeworld. However, soon after this, Kenobi would meet the ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn, who explained that due to the risk it would reawaken Anakin, Vader would never visit the Lars family home, thus ensuring Luke's safety. Despite the fact Kenobi was filled with deep regret due to his belief that he helped create this terrifying monster, he also managed to find additional purpose in this disturbing revelation. Kenobi would become hyper-focused on protecting Luke, now seeing his mission on Tatooine as even more important due to the threat Vader posed. 